Good morning and welcome to Willis Farms. I appreciate you tuning in with me today. Um, this will be streaming on my Facebook Willis Farms page and also it will be streaming on my YouTube channel. So if you miss it live on Facebook, you'll be able to go to my YouTube channel and watch um, the tutorial at your leisure. What we're going to do today is I'm going to th show you three different methods of how to paint a barn quilt. And we're going to paint a blue jay today. But I'm going to th show you three different me methods. I'm going to show you a method using paintbrushes, um, freehand paintbrush. I'm going to show you a method using tape and paintbrushes and I'm going to show you a method using tape and sponges. So I'm going to put you on my so you can see an overview and we will begin. Hopefully you can see as I adjust this and hopefully not okay. There we go. Good, good, good. Okay, so the colors that we're going to use today are all fusion mineral paints. If you order just a pattern um, or um, you may just use craft paint. I use fusion mineral paint um, because one, I'm a retailer for it. <clears throat> Two, I consider it a really high quality paint. It's an all-in-one paint. Three, it has, what I mean by all in one, it has the primer, the pigment, and the top coat all in one. And also it means that you don't have to put a top coat on this if you want to display this outside. So the colors that we're using today are limestone, buttermilk cream, coal black, park bench, sorry, this is chocolate, this is coal black, midnight blue, and little whale. Okay, so the first method that I want to show you, I always try to work inside out. It just helps um, me stay clean. And also, I'm going to show you a little hack that I have. So if you don't have scissors, that is if I can find it. My goodness, I had it this morning. How embarrassing is that? Make sure you have your coffee because with cough, life, coffee, coffee's better. Yeah. So you're just going to want a straight edge. So we're just going to use um, this straight edge because I can't find my other straight edge. Isn't that strange? Anyway, let's begin. We don't need to get all trapped up in that. So one thing I think is important if you're brand new to doing barn quilts is going along and actually marking um, the areas that you're going to paint what color. So I am pretty um, familiar with barn quilts. So what I'm doing, this is gonna be the first method where we're going to use a sponge. And I'm gonna just show you um, how you can paint them so easy with a sponge. So we're taping the areas that we're going to paint um, midnight blue on our blue jay. Now I am taping on the exterior of my line. And yeah, I'm taping over because I'm going to show you the hack method pretty soon. Okay. So I'm taping over and we're not taping those all the way down because we're going to need to discard those in a second. Now this one, I'm just going to pull away. So I can get to it. And also, if you um, notice your lines are a little wonky or not completely even, by doing the taping method, um, one thing that is awesome is it's going to really straighten out those lines. Okay. So I'm just going along my hole where I'm going to be painting my dark blue on my blue jay. I looked up the meaning of like the folklore meaning of blue jay this morning and I've already forgotten. So I do apologize for that. Um, but blue jays 
are absolutely stunningly beautiful. I love their color pattern that they have on their wings. Um, you could go into such depth detail if you wanted to on your wing, just kind of um, shade it in a lot with your black, your little whale, and your midnight blue. We're not going to do that today. Part of it is because we are, you know, time is always of the essence. And um, we always have stuff that we need to do, don't we? So it kind of looks messy right now. Um, and that is okay. Um, it's totally okay if it looks messy. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take our straight edge and we're just going to lay it across where we have that tape. And we're going to rip um, our areas where we need um, it to be. And if it doesn't, if it's being stubborn, which sometimes it does, just score it with your nail. Um, and you're just going to go along there. And then if it still doesn't want to, then just fold it back. Okay. You can just score it like that. Fold it back. Sometimes... Um, it just gets stubborn like that. I can relate. I'm sometimes stubborn. We don't need to do that one. We will do this one because we do need to see what I mean. Sometimes it just gets a little stubborn. So all we're going to do is just fold it back on our, our pencil line. Okay. Now, if that really bothers you, go ahead and use scissors um, to cut that remainder off. It does not bother me. But this makes it a really easy method, so much quicker method of actually um, making sure that we can get those straight lines and our tape lines. This is a tape hack, okay? And the tighter you can push down on that, the easier it is. It's easier with a lot of tape instead of the little amounts of tape, but we're just gonna push that back. Okay, so now all of our midnight, well, we still have that one. Okay, now all of our midnight blue areas are exposed. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to take our sponge, and this is our midnight blue right there, and we're just going to dab it in there. Just see, that's way, way, way too much paint. Can you see that? Way too much paint. So we're going to dab, and you, then you're going to dab off until there's no texture on your sponge, okay? You do not want a single bit of texture, which I mean you don't want any pooling of your paint. And now all we're going to do is we're going to sponge over our area. I'm not going back to my large area. I'm going back to where I've um, dabbed off. So I'm not getting too much paint on my sponge because less is literally better. So little paint on your sponge or on your brush is the best method. And the darker colors have really good coverage. Of course, I'm gonna wanna go over this again. I am gonna add a little bit of extra paint and then sponge off. See, so we wanna make sure that we don't have too much paint on our um, sponge. We're gonna sponge off on there, okay? And then we're gonna let this dry, okay? So we're doing a blue jay on this. And since we're letting that one dry, I'm gonna go ahead over here and I'm going to tape for my leaves, okay? And just, I'm just going to rip that up. I'm not going to tape for my leaves. I'm actually, yes, I am. Yes, I am. Because then I can show you the paint method. So just lay your tape down on the exterior of your line. And I would like to paint this green right here and this green right here. And then this area right there, I'm actually going to paint brown. So this is the green I want to paint, and I want to paint this green. So we're going to tape here, and then we're going to pull off.
there. And it does help if you have a larger amount of tape. It's the, with the just ripping method, it's kind of hard if you have, um, if it's just a little. So let's give us a lot more space on that tape. So we're gonna take that again. Hopefully you can see this on camera and we're just gonna pull across right there, okay? So as long as you have that straight edge, any straight edge, it'll do. Now we're going to take our brush and we're going to use our park bench, same method. You're gonna load your brush, but you're gonna to wanna to make sure your brush is not overloaded. So that is way too much paint way too much paint, you just want a very little amount. The best method is always go half over your tape and where you want to paint, okay? This helps seal that edge um, on your project. Half over the tape and half over. And then you're going to paint away from the tape. Do not paint towards the tape. You're painting away from the tape. So we're sealing our tape with our brush strokes, sealing them, okay? And then we're painting away. So we're painting away from our tape this way to finish filling in those areas. Now, if you don't, the best part is if you don't use an extensive amount of paint, then you can come back very quickly because it dries very fast um, and do your second coat. Now, if you put too much paint, it's going to take a very long time to dry. And the under layer, the bottom layer of your paint is actually going to be very wet. The top layer will fool you. You'll think your paint is dry. Um, it's actually not because the under layer is still drying if you have, if it's pooled up. And then when you go to paint over it for your second coat, it'll pull your paint instead of actually painting it well. Um, and so you need to make sure that you are um, allowing your paint to dry all the way through. But the best tip to that is to not overload your paint. So we're gonna go um, really quick again and dry our green. And this is how you would use it with a paintbrush. Taping with a paintbrush. On really large, if you're going to use a really large, um, a four by four, you're not going to use the sponge method. Um, but another version of a sponge method would be a, um, a roller. You can use a paint roller on a four by four. So, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull our tape and we're gonna start seeing the transformation of our Blue Jay, where we're actually starting to see where it's like, oh, that's gonna be a Blue Jay. That's gonna be gorgeous. So while we're at it, we'll just go ahead and pull our green because some of our tape has overlapped. You can do a wet pull, which means your paint is still tacky. Um, you can do that, that's fine. Um, just be aware to watch your hands um, because if you're in your paint, then of course your hands are gonna get um, paint on them. So while we're waiting for that, I'm going to show you the free hand. And I want to show you the free hand um, on my beak. So I'm taking paint, doing the exact same method, dabbing it off, okay? And then where the line is, I'm taking my brush. I always have a habit of dabbing off my brush. Um, and then I'm pulling away from my line. The smoothest application for um, barn quilts is actually the sponge. That's going to get the most level, smooth application um, for your paint. Then the second is, um, and also the lighter colors do show more brush strokes at the beginning. 
Um, I will go over this again a couple of times. But then the second for um, smooth application is to tape and straight lines, of course. There's a few bleeds, um, less bleeds with sponging, few bleeds with taping. And if your hand is steady, practice, practice, practice. Um, painting on just freehanding it. While we're at it, I'm going to go ahead and do the interior of my eye section using freehand um, as well. And I'm going to use my little whale on this. I looked up blue jays, and unlike cardinals, blue jays do not have a full. Um, I like to call it the mask. I don't know what it's actually called, but this area on a blue jay is not all black. So it's actually the lighter color that their tail and their underbelly is, which they kind of look white. I did this um, little whale just for the contrast of blues. I think it's beautiful. And if you're joining me today, I cannot see you um, because the camera is up, but I do appreciate, I will go back through um, the comments. So if you are joining and you're streaming with me live on Facebook, I do appreciate that a lot. So I am just freehanding and all you're doing is you're just making sure you're meeting up those lines, okay? You're just gonna meet up the lines. I personally love freehanding. Um, my projects, I like to, um, it takes a deep amount of concentration, and I really enjoy that a lot. Um, it just, I, I find it freeing, but not everybody enjoys that. So I also noticed with Blue Jays, this portion right here of a Blue Jay is black. So I'm going to draw it in. Um just with my brush. And that was way too much. So I'm just drawing this in on my, my pencil line of where my um, midnight blue and my little whale meet. I just drew a black line. Now I'm going to tape for my little whale. And if there's any lines that you missed, which I did miss a line here, um, one thing also is great with taping is you can grab those lines. I always like to do my background last um, on barn quilts. It's completely different if you're doing landscape art, um, but I like to do my background last because then if there are any bleeds, I can fix all my bleeds at one time. And a bleed is just basically meaning that my paint went over the line and it's not very crisp. So my black is a little wet still there, so I'm gonna let that dry before I um, tape that area. I can tape this exterior though. And I like to do the least amount of tape pulling that I have to. So overlapping on the interior of my tape is so much easier um, than trying to always um, tape pull. So this one is not going to. So we're just gonna pull that. We're gonna fold that one because it's not gonna, it's not gonna um I 
made these keychains. It was what I had since I couldn't find my other um, straight edge. So I'm just drying that up a little bit with this sponge. Then we're going to use it um, right here. No matter what method you use when you're making a barn quilt, if you tape or if you hand draw, no matter what method you use, um, it's patience. It's it's a relaxing um, technique. It's a, a relaxing um, craft, if you'd like to call it a craft. It is, it's kind of the Art Deco um, or the primitive art era. These are very historical barn quilts. Um, they preserved family history and they always told a story. And so I I love barn quilts. I love birds. I love birds a lot. So I'm very attracted to birds and I also love flowers. Um, so I, I really enjoy the barn quilt flowers. And as you notice, I did not get this one right here. So we're going to rip that one really fast. Or we're just going to fold it. Just going to fold it back. I am not perfect. I just enjoy creating. I enjoy the creative process. I think the creative process is the most important instead of trying to be perfect. The relaxation is more the point than having a perfect piece. Because there is enough expectation on us as it is. So we need to have something that we can just allow ourselves to relax and enjoy the process. And you're just gonna go over that um, with your sponge. And then we're gonna let that dry. And while we're letting that dry, we're gonna do the exact same process that we did down here. Um, for our leaves. So I'm taping. And then on this one, since I did these two, on this one, I'm actually going to do this one right here, and I'm going to do this one right here. Did I just, I did not, okay. I was like, I think I just taped over the area that I wasn't, I wasn't, I didn't want to tape over, but I did not, I'm good. Okay, now we're gonna paint those. We're gonna go back to our green brush. Just grab a little bit of paint, making sure that we're dabbing off so we don't have too much paint. Remember half over our tape, half over our tape. And then um, we're going to first coat. We need to paint away from our tape lines. So we paint away, first coat, paint away. It is harder if you have a smaller area, um, but just do smaller paint strokes. And I also think if you have a smaller piece like this, this one's a 10 by 10. Um, if you have a smaller piece, 10 inches by 10 inches, if you have a smaller piece like this, um, the um, sponge method is so much easier. Give that a little bit more. Okay, now I can sponge again my little whale area. Thank you. 
And if you do run out of paint, like I said, it doesn't take very much. I'm like a dime size um, for this type of project. If you're going to use a, a, as you increase, you're just going to increase your paint. Um, but don't pour too much. Um, it's better to go to pour more when you need it than versus um, pouring too much and then wasting paint. So we're going to let this dry um, after I pull my tape. So this is a what we call a wet pull. Um, just meaning that my paint is still a little wet and just a little tacky. But then you get to see, look how beautiful that is. You're starting to see the birth of your blue jay. Now on your base coat, if you didn't want to um, paint it, you don't have to. Um, you honestly could just take a stain and go over your base coat with that stain. And that would be very, very beautiful. This is NDO. So this can be um, this wood based. Majority of my burn quilts, I do use um, NDO if I know it's going to have the potential of being outside um, because MDO is a, a manufactured out product that is intended for outdoors. Um, and Fusion Mineral Paint, does it does have the top coat in it, so it is sealed, so you don't have to worry about it um, peeling, chipping, or fading. It will not um, do any of those, so I can display this outside um, on my mailbox. That's I do have a subscription box on Crate Joy. Um, it's called the Blue Bee Box, and each month you would receive a um, hand-drawn barn quilt. Um, each month is different. So um, you would, by the end of the year, you would have 12 different designs. So if you have little areas like this that um, need to be filled in, don't worry about it. Just grab a little bit more paint and we're just going to um, fill those areas in with our paintbrush. Just be very careful to just go ahead and follow that paint line and then pull your paint out. Also, if you decide to wax or go over it with a stain, I think it's absolutely stunningly beautiful because the stain does fill in any of those edges. Um, and it looks exceptionally beautiful. Okay, now I'm gonna do this area in my brown. And so it'll look like he is sitting on a stem. I will show you how to do that in hand painting again. I probably chose the wrong brush. I do like when I'm hand painting to not have brushes that have all these hairs that are going everywhere. Can you guys see that? Um, I like it when they're not, um, when they're a little bit more smooth than that, but these are not expensive brushes. And we're just running our hand um, along that line. I love this because it does require um, relaxation techniques. So it re requires you to just calm. Um, like slow your thoughts a little bit, slow your breathing a little bit. So it is very therapeutic in my opinion. And if you're nervous about it, just go ahead and tape it. Don't worry about it. Do whatever you feel is more comfortable for you. This is your project and it's more important that you enjoy the process then, um, you know, beat yourself up that it's not turning out absolutely perfect. We hear it all the time, and it's crazy to me because we hear it all the time that, you know, we'll never seek perfection. We'll never, we'll never obtain perfection. Um, but we're surrounded by that desire. So let this process be um, just something where you don't feel like you have to do that. 
And so if your lines aren't perfectly straight, um, that's okay. It's just the bark on the tree. Or maybe your lines aren't perfectly straight on your blue, your blue jay. And that's perfectly okay. Because then maybe the blue jay is just fluffing his wings a little bit. Um, maybe your, your tree um, leaves aren't perfectly straight. And that's okay. Because maybe they're just blowing in the wind. Um, art is interpretation of life. And um, it's a beautiful interpretation of life. Because each of our lives are different and bring beautiful color to the world around us. So I have my branch and then I have my two leaves that are going over. I'm going to grab some coffee real fast. Now I'm going to fill in my background. You could fill in your background um, by doing um, the... Um, sponge method, which is awesome. Um, I, if I was going to do that, I would just go over it. Let's show you. So you need to make sure that your, um, Paint is dry for sure. And all we're doing right now is just covering up all of our painted areas, okay, so we can do our background. I am avoiding my brown right now because I am waiting for it to dry. And you're not going to want to really scrub your, like, you're not going to want to really force your masking tape um, because you don't want it to peel up. Um, it literally is just to add a protective coat. And you just need to run your finger on it um, gently, not forcefully. Check that. Yep, that's dry now. If you check your paint and it feels um, room temperature, then you're pretty good that it's dry enough. I'm going to do these large areas first. And then I probably will just go ahead and hand brush in the smaller areas. I'm telling you guys, if my head wasn't cut on today, it would probably fall off. You ever have days where you just can't seem to... Find what you're looking for. And no, I will not sing, even though that song just ran through my mind. I love you too. Love, love, love you too. I don't know. Maybe that's not even you too. I am not very good at um, American pop culture. It's not my thing. It's my husband's thing. I'm pulling this guy just because I noticed I had a small gap right here and I want to cover it so I can sponge easier. Okay, now my large areas are exposed and I can easily um, sponge those areas. Now remember, with a lighter color, you will have to sponge over multiple times, okay? So we're just going to go, oh wow, I have a whole lot of blue. I have a whole lot of blue exposed right there. One great thing also is sometimes it's easier just to cover the whole area. Okay, 
so we're just dabbing the same that we did before. went right over my nose guys completely forgot to take my nose so i will be painting over my nose again no problem no stress the beauty of painting is if you make a blender like that guess what you're painting so you can paint right over it I bet you guys saw that in advance, too, and you're probably like, oh, don't forget his nose. But since I can't see your comments, um, I didn't have your help. So I apologize if you said it and I didn't catch it. But now, you know, if you do something silly like that, there's a solution. I know like my daughter crochets and she often tried years ago to get me to crochet. And I always looked at it. I was like, oh, my goodness, if you make a mistake in crocheting, you got to pull that whole thing out um, to fix your mistake. The beauty of painting is if you make a mistake, just let the paint dry, paint over it. Simple, simple. It does take some time because you have to let your paint dry. But, you know, go make another cup of coffee while your paint's drying. We're going to go ahead and pull this one right here so I can get this area as well. Usually never on on a Sunday morning. Um, usually Sunday mornings are time to worship or just, you know, connect, um, reconnect. But it's been a very hectic week. My husband had surgery this week, and I feel like I'm a bazillion times behind. And a whole lot of transitions have happened this week. So another reason why I think Art is so beautiful because it's just a place that you can go to and just reconnect with yourself. You know, you can be mad with paint and it lets you. Or you can be happy with paint and it lets you. So we're just going over again, remembering to dab on and dab off. Because we want to make it as even as possible.
There you go. It looks pretty good to me. Looks pretty good. So while I'm here, I'm going to grab my yellow brush and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to um, paint back in my beak um, to where I accidentally dabbed over it. Might actually have to wait. The paint might be a little too damp. So. So barn quilts give you an opportunity just to slow down. It's beautiful. So much is pushing us. So it just kind of slows us down a bit. Okay, let's go over here and go ahead and tape this guy. We can pull that and we can just fix those if we want. I have decided I'm going to show you um, a waxing. I'm going to put a pearl wax over this. Or we could also even glaze. So remember, if you have those little edges, just take a small brush, grab a little bit of paint, just a little bit, and you're just going to pull. Just clean that up a bit. And if you overlap um, your tape onto, you're not going to have that problem. I like to always just run it um, even with my pencil marks. See, very easy. It does take a steady hand, I will say that. Isn't that cute? Cute little blue jay. And there you have him. The adorable. Fix this guy up a little bit. And there he is, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you enjoyed watching him come to life. I love my little blue jay. So if you're interested in ordering, just let me know. Um, we are revamping our... Um, website right now. It will be back up available on the 1st of May. But if you would like to order this Blue Jay in advance, just let me know and I can definitely get a kit out to you. Or if you'd like to order the Blue Jay um, finished, also I can finish it, paint it for you. So just let me know what you'd like to do. And I appreciate you tuning in. Really hope you have a beautiful day. Okay. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.